after three weeks of intense qualifiers and, well, not being able to see a lot of the matches, the APAC Flash Ops Holiday Showdown Finals has arrived. Six teams across Korea, Japan, and Southeast Asia are set to duke it out for $30,000. It's one of the first tournaments in the post-Overwatch League era, and there's some incredible talent that is going to be participating. With the final set to be on land in front of a live audience in Korea, with many familiar faces you know and love, you don't want to miss out. In today's video, we'll be covering everything you'd need to know about the APAC Flash Ops Tournament. There isn't a lot of coverage in the public on this, so I wanted to do my best to catch you up and give you some updates and get you excited for an official pro tournament with some of the world's best. In today's video, you'll get a guide on everything you need to know about, a recap of how we got here, and some analysis and predictions on top of it. First things first, how about some general info that's pretty important? So this is going to be a six-team tournament, like I said before, played over three days from December 8th through December 10th. It'll consist of two three-team groups, followed by a single elimination four-team playoff. Group A will be Isohan, Hamster, and Vesta Crew, and Group B has O2 High School, Veril, and DAF. These six made it through a gauntlet of qualifiers over the last couple of weeks. More about these teams in a little bit. For now, let's hone in on how you can watch this. I wanted to make it known that this time, yes, you can watch the games. At bare minimum, there's a Korean broadcast on the Overwatch Korea Esports YouTube. Link in the description. They recently streamed the last couple of days of the Korea Knockout, so that seems like the home base, so to speak. The first game of each day is set to start around 3 a.m. Eastern. It's all from Korea, so it goes without saying that any Americans, at least, are gonna have to stay up extra late to watch. And while I can't give you any guarantees, there's always a possibility of an English stream as well. Former OWL GM and current broadcast communications lead Unknown could be doing an English co-stream of his own. He's done it before. Additionally, OWL commentator Avro recently streamed the last couple of days of the Korea qualifier, so I wouldn't be surprised if he got to do these matches as well, but no guarantees. I would just keep a very close eye on their Twitch channels just in case. I promise it's not going to be like the last time where I was hyping it up, then there was nothing to be found. I promise you that it won't simply be speculation and getting hyped. And boy, is this going to be a doozy. Some very stacked teams made it here, and I'm excited to talk about them. And of course, I think we've got to start with the powerhouse, the Korean teams. The first team to make it here was Hamster, followed by O2 High School and Isohan. These three made it through an absolute gauntlet filled to the brim with top Korean players. Here's a look at the eight-team bracket they made it through to get you up to speed. In this double elim tourney, it was Hamster who took home the top seed without dropping a single game along the way. Taking home second was O2 High School, who pretty much only struggled against Hamster, and by the skin of their teeth, Isohan was able to get that third place spot. Overall, the results weren't too shocking. The only thing that really stands out, at least in my opinion, is the very early elimination of the Smurfs. A team with Prophet, Bird Ring, Smurf, Izayaki, and Violet not winning a single game is kinda ridiculous. Additionally, Poker Face with guys like Bellows, Rhea, and Valentine, plus 815 with guys like Decay and Choice A1, got pretty close to cracking that top three. Here's a friendly reminder in case you forgot on who plays for these exciting rosters. On Hamster, who are arguably the front runners to run the table, they have the Season 5 Dallas tank and support lines, plus Proper and Stalker at DPS. And yes, the guy named Kevster in this gameplay is Proper's ult account. But I mean, like, come on! This team is unreal. We all knew they were going to be a top contender, and they showed us why. They played amazing. There's a lot of firepower there. Two world-class DPS that are extremely flexible, plus maybe some of the greatest tank and support duos ever is pretty hard to beat. Even if they all haven't played together before on one team, the sheer talent alone makes them a threat. They did well for themselves, I mean they didn't lose a game, and their bread and butter throughout that run seemed to be a Fearless Doom or Monkey, plus Tracer Sojourn on a Brig. However, in general, they did play a bunch of different comps, they got Hanbin involved with things like Sigma and Junker Queen, they can do a little bit of everything, and it's definitely going to take a good combination of both heroics 
and teamwork to take them down. However, don't expect them to run away with it. If this tournament has taught us anything, it's that household names don't necessarily mean much. Also, despite coming in first, O2 High School pushed them to the limit both times they played. There were some very sweaty matches in both of those series, and it definitely was very close. The idea of an upset is not very far-fetched, but considering the results and the team they have, they're probably the favorites. But not far behind them necessarily is O2 High School. It's literally an O2 Blast Homecoming. This exact team won many games together just like a year ago in Korean contenders before joining the league. A lot of them didn't get all that far this year, but they are a very talented group, and they're definitely the deepest team in this tournament, and they're clearly super hungry to get back to their winning ways. There's a ton of potential on this team. A lot of these guys were kind of left to carry some not-so-good teams, so altogether, they could be a pretty special group. And that kind of synergy they have goes a long way in a tournament like this, where a lot of other teams were more so just randomly made up. It was kind of interesting to see O2 get so far, considering what just happened in the league this year, but it goes to show you that they really do have what it takes to be a dominant presence. I would not count these guys out. If these guys meet Hamster again, this time might go different. And of course, rounding out your top three Korean rosters is Isohan, a team that didn't quite look how we expected them to. They just barely made it here. I mean, by the skin of their teeth, it was a tough path. But what I found very impressive about this run is how they still made it here despite not having their entire roster as advertised. Pelican, Chorong, and Vigilante were great, but thanks to the Saudi E-League, someone in Merit who were supposed to be there did not end up participating. Instead, they had to rely on Ants and Kalios as substitutes to get the job done. So the fact that they still beat some good teams is a pretty good sign. Isohan relied on their comfort picks to make it here rather than anything else. Lots of Pelican Echo, plus Kalios on Sig, and Ans on Hitskin. And honestly, it's really not a bad strategy in a tournament like this. It serves them well. But in the finals like this, it may not take them all the way. Which gets me into the interesting part of this team. Will their roster be at full strength? I'm not certain if someone and Merit are even going to play. I don't know if they've had enough time to practice and get settled back into Korea. There's a world where we might see Ans and Kalios again. But in the result that someone and Merit do play, and they do feel ready, that could be a game changer. A team with three Florida Mayhem Championship players plus Pelican could instantly become a favorite to win this entire tournament, so keep a very close eye on them. And yeah... I think that basically sums up what the Korean teams are looking like. They all have some great names and very specific strengths. Hamster has the star power, O2 has the synergy, and Isohan has the comfort and the element of surprise. I could see any one of them taking home the crown, and they're who I fully expect to all be in the top four heading into the final day. And that's mostly because, well, the qualifying teams from Japan and Southeast Asia, I don't really know if they line up from a skill perspective. Vesta Crew, DAF, Veril, they're all intriguing, and they have a decent number of successful players from the Pacific contender scene, but they're just not proven enough at the top level against Korean talent. DAF just won the most recent season of Pacific contenders, and Veril, I mean, they're essentially the 2023 Japanese national team. They have a lot of experience with each other. This country is kind of on the rise, and they showed some steady improvement, even taking down Team France convincingly. They love the Doomfist comp, and they're actually pretty fun to watch. Could they maybe catch O2 slipping? I mean, probably not, but you can't necessarily rule it out. When it comes to my expectations for the tournament, it really does depend. I can't speak for APAC, but I know for a fact that the NA and EU games that I plan to cover next week are playing on the new Mauga patch. In the event that APAC does the same, that could change the results based on what's strong and who gets more custom to the new stuff faster. But then again, with lack of prep time, maybe everybody just sticks to their comfort. It can go anywhere, I really mean it. In the result that this is what they plan, I think that any of the Korean teams could have a good shot, especially if Isohan are at full strength. 
nobody is invincible in this thing, and the qualifiers made that very clear. So here's a brief overview of what I'm thinking with predictions. In Group A, Hamster get the top seed, and Isohan get number two. There's just no way that Vesta Crew beat either of those guys. In Group B, O2 High School should easily get number one, and I think I'll go with Veril as my number two. I like what I saw from Team Japan, so I'll trust them to advance, although DAF are kind of their rivals, so anything could happen there. And in the final bracket, regardless of what the seeding looks like, I'll go with Hamster as the Flash Ops champs. Again, I don't think of this as some walk in the park, but their roster is really strong, and I kind of feel like all of these guys are super unsatisfied thanks to recent failures in their careers, and that'll just add fuel to the fire and push them over the top. Calling it now, Proper's gonna go crazy. Get ready. Also, just knowing that the finals happened so soon after the qualifiers, I don't know if there's enough time for extra prep or significant changes in what teams play, and I think that bodes well for a team that when feeling it, that's when in their comfort, can simply overpower you. As for who I think they're playing in the finals, I'm of the belief that it'll be 0-2 just because Synergy goes a long way in a casual tournament. They also beat the snot out of Isohan, so I think that you'd have to be feeling pretty good about their path to the finals. But hey, if someone and Merit do end up playing, that could definitely change. But I have fallen into the trap of not investing into Synergy way too often in these tournaments, so I'm not gonna do it again. The only thing we can hope for now is some good Overwatch. But that basically wraps up my analysis and what you need to know about the Winter Flash Ops APAC Final. I'm excited to watch these amazing players go at it, and I hope you are too. Oh, and remember, stay tuned for coverage of the NA and EU tournaments next week. Thank you all for watching, I appreciate you a bunch, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.